Hi everyone, it's Ichi here. Welcome to another episode of the Tangerine Knits podcast. It's been a while since I posted. I haven't been on this channel all summer. So this episode is going to be everything that I knitted this summer and I have a lot to share with you. So I'm super excited. I think I have like five-ish finished objects to share. So without further ado, I will get started with what I'm wearing today, which is, I'd say one of my favorites that I made this summer. And this is the camisole number no. nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I knit this using Sandus Garn Tin Lina in the color Sunny Lime. So I showed this yarn in my last video, which I posted at the end of June. And I had been saying that I've been really, really excited to, to knit something in this color and in this yarn as well. And I had been eyeing the camisole number no. nine pattern. At that time, she hadn't released it yet. And I was just like refreshing her page every single day, trying to see when it's going to be released. I think at one point she said the way was almost over and it'll be released like at the end of the week or something like that. And I was just like, well, are we talking like end of the business week on Friday? Like which time zone are we talking? Is it Sunday? Is it, you know, when is it going to come out? At that point, I was just like so excited. So when it did eventually come out, I think I cast it on like the very same weekend because I already had this yarn in my, um, in, in the hand, like waiting for me to start knitting it. So um, the pattern calls for a knitting for all of Merino, I will say. So because I knitted this in this plant yarn, um, Tinlina is like a cotton linen viscose blend and maybe something else. And I knew that the final object would look a little bit different than the Merino. So I will say that, you know, because it's a plant yarn, it doesn't keep its shape as well as Merino. So eventually um, I can stand up a little bit. This, this part under my bust does eventually kind of flare out a little bit, you know? Um, so it looks a little bit more like casual than that really fitted merino look. Um, also for the pattern, there are these beautiful double folded edges on the neckline and the armholes. And there's also like a chain stitch detailing that is part of what really drew me in about this pattern. I will also say that this detailing didn't necessarily translate as well onto this plant-based yarn than the merino because merino is like a lot plumper. So the, the little chain stitch braid thing just looks, you know, very 3D. Whereas here, it tends to stretch out a little bit and it looks a little bit more flat. So you can still kind of see it, but it, I wouldn't say it looks as stunning as it does on the merino. So those are kind of two things to keep in mind. Um, I will say that because I knitted this in a plant yarn, it's extremely practical for me. I can wear it outside and I have worn it outside a bunch of times when it's like 90 degrees out and really humid and I'm perfectly comfortable or at least like as comfortable as I think you can be in outside in weather like that. Like for example, I think, you know, because it has some linen content, it doesn't feel like it pulls sweat at all. Actually, I think this is probably more like breathable and comfortable and wicking than some of the just, you know, the polyester shirts that I have that are store-bought that are summer shirts, you know? So this is an excellent yarn for wearing in the summer for me, um, even when it's very hot and humid. So I'll talk a little bit more about the pattern. The pattern um, has you knit the straps in the front and then you join to knit the full front and then you uh, pick up stitches from the back for the straps on the back and then knit the back. Um, and then you join all together in the round. You have this double folded edge on the bottom and then also on the corn on the armholes and then also on the neckline. So the pattern calls for a 3.3 millimeter needle or something like that on the merino and at a 30 stitch gauge. And I size, I did a couple of swatches first. First I used a 2.75 millimeter needle and I got a 27 stitch gauge. And normally I would be totally fine to just knit something a little bit off gauge. I just knit a smaller size and it's less knitting. So kind of a win-win, but I was a little bit hesitant to use the 27 stitch gauge for, for this pattern because it calls for a quite a good amount of negative ease. I think the pattern says 12 to 15 centimeters or something like that. And I thought that maybe when some, when the fabric is under so much stretch that if there is like holes or it's at a looser gauge, it would look a little bit holy and transparent. And I didn't really want that. And so I thought I'd try a little bit harder to get closer to that 30 centimeter gauge. So I tried swatching with a 2.25 millimeter needle and I got like 29 stitches, which isn't quite 30, but I figured that's kind of as low as I can really go with the needle size. Cause number one, it's the smallest needle size that I had at the time. And even that, um, you know, whatever, whatever needle size you use to knit the body, you have to size down to knit the double knitted bands so that they don't flare out. Um, so not double knitted, double folded bands, um, so that they don't flare out. And so I was already going to have to buy a two millimeter needle to knit the, knit the double folded bands. And I didn't really want to 
you know, knit the whole body in a two millimeter needle and then use an even smaller needle size to knit the double knitted bands or double folded bands. I just thought that would be way too small. So I thought 29 stitches is good enough for me. Let's just go with that. Um, because it's still a little bit off gauge, I did do some calculations to make sure that I would still get the, the negative ease that I like wanted to have. So I knitted a size small and for me, it ended up giving, based on my calculations, like 14-ish centimeters. And I thought that was okay because, um, you know, thin lina is a fabric that I know like would stretch a lot because it's cotton linen. And so I figured airing on the side of being a little bit tight will allow it to kind of stretch out and loosen up to something that's more comfortable. And this fabric definitely does loosen up as I already kind of alluded to um, in comparison to a merino, definitely. But also just, you know, when I first, uh, like when I first finished it, it was extremely tight, like a little bit uncomfortable. And I was a little bit concerned about that. But after just a little bit of wearing like a couple of hours, it really loosens up. In fact, I think I wore it for a full day once and then um, the front underneath the bus actually became like almost too flared for me. Um, so yeah. That's just something that's the nature of this plant-based yarn that it's that it stretches as you wear. It looks a little bit floppy, but I think it's okay for this, you know, casual piece. Another thing about the fit is that the armholes I still find to be a little bit tight. So I first knitted it using the pickup ratio for the armholes that is specified in the pattern. And somehow it just ended up being a little too tight for me. So after I knitted the armholes, I blocked it to try it out. And I think it was just a little, a little too tight. I don't know that it's necessarily a patterns issue. It's probably because of, you know, all the modifications I made with changing the yarn, changing the uh, gauge and, you know, knitting a size smaller probably in order to meet the measurements that I needed. I decided to undo the, the armholes, which, um, you know, they're not exactly a walk in the park to knit. <laughs> so first of all, they're on really tiny needles. Like I, like I said, I use two millimeter because I had to size down my needle size so much. So it's a lot of knitting to begin with. The picking up of the stitches on this plant yarn on metal needles was also pretty challenging for me just because it was so slippery. And I'm, I'm sure you could use like a, you know, bamboo or wooden needle. I just, I don't have them. So I use my metal needles and yeah, picking up the stitches took a long time. Knitting it took a long time, but I think the worst part for me was sewing down the neck bands. I mean, sewing, sewing the like, well, yeah, the neck band and the armhole bands down because everything is, is hand sewn. Part of the technique that she uses to get this like chain stitch detailing is to sew it on the right side, like right side facing out. And so I had to be a little bit more precise with the stitches than maybe I could have gotten away with if I knitted it, if I sewed it on the wrong side. So all in all, I'd say that these bands are extremely labor, labor intensive. Um, and I, yeah, I ended up having to do it twice, which uh, was, was a lot of effort. So this was a labor of love. And like I said, I'm not even sure if this chain stitch detail on this plant yarn really pays off for me. Um, it, it's definitely nice, but I don't know that it added enough that I couldn't have just, you know, knitted it on the wrong side, folded it down and called it a day. So, uh, yeah, I, that, that part, that part was kind of a, you know, <laughs> took a little bit of a toll on my fingers because, because of all of that, but you know, it's better to kind of go through that and have a garment that fits than not. So uh, I should say the second time I redid it, I, the first time I redid it, I guess, second go around, I picked up a couple, like at a, I picked up more stitches. Basically I used a bigger pickup ratio than what's called for in the pattern. And then it is still like a little bit snug, but you know, after, after I wear it, it loosens up to where it's comfortable, but yeah, I, I could stand to have it a little bit longer, but that's probably, you know, a result of my gauge being different. Um, my row gauge and stitch gauge maybe being different. I did go on a trip to Scotland over July. Um, I went as a solo trip and I brought this project with me to knit on. I don't really knit a whole lot when I'm traveling just because I want to be present and, you know, be where, like enjoy the place that I'm at. But definitely on the plane I knitted and also a couple of nights when I just wanted to relax a little bit before going to sleep, I knitted a little bit as well. Um, but it was really easy to bring because I had just been working in the front and the back. So it was just not a whole lot of fabric. Um, and I had just one ball of yarn that I could use. So it was, it was pretty convenient. Oh, I should say I purchased three balls of yarn. I used like maybe two and a half ish. Um, so yeah, it ended up being like a pretty affordable project as well. 
So yeah, I really like this piece. I love the color so much. That's, I think, one of my favorite things about it. It's just such a fun color to wear. Um, I think I recently discovered that yellowy greens, like chartreuse colors, kind of suit me. Um, I always thought like these bright colors would be really hard to find like a good bright color to like match my skin tone. But I think when it's a little bit warmer like this, um, yeah, it's quite nice. So yeah, I love this piece and I'm really happy to have it in my summer wardrobe. All right, next up I have this little number. I'll put a try on clip so you can see it a little bit better. This is the Barbaro Top by Pernille Larson on Knitting for Olive. And this is knitted with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color Cardamom. I, um, Basically, I knitted this piece because I had this yarn and stash. I think I mentioned this a couple of times uh, on my channel already, but I bought it to make another project and it didn't end up working out. So I had five balls of this yarn to do something with and I thought it would be a nice, you know, pattern to knit like a little lacy camisole. And I had seen this pattern on Anna or APT Atelier's page. I think she had a you know summer patterns or spring summer patterns video and she showed this this tank top and i'd never seen it before that and i thought it was so gorgeous i love the lace detailing that looks like little fans you know and so i um had been yeah super super excited to to knit this and i really like this piece i finished this one relatively recently i think it was only a couple of weeks ago that i finished it um, and at first I was, you know, still being a little dubious about this yarn color because, you know, I, I don't think it is the most flattering color on me, but I think after knitting this, it looks, it doesn't look bad. And especially if I wear bottoms that are like a dark color, like black bottoms, it looks, and just basically add some contrast to my outfit. It looks a little bit better because I think my main gripe with it is that it's too close to my skin tone, but when I have contrast in another part of my outfit, then I think it looks just fine. Like I actually really like wearing this with black shorts or black pants, I think. It's just like very classy and elegant. And then certainly this will be good as a layering piece under a little cardigan or something like that because it is such a neutral color. And I just think that the lace, especially on, looks so just intricate and beautiful. And I like, sometimes I look at it in the mirror and I'm like, I can't believe I, I knitted this fabric, you know? Um, I also really like this scalloping edge detail on the bottom. I think that's very cute. Uh, on me, this hits like right at where my high-waisted jeans start. So it's a pretty good length, um, but I did knit, I think like one or two pattern repeats shorter in order to get that length. At first I tried shortening the straps as well because a lot of people on Ravelry talked about the straps being too long. But um, as I'll talk about, I, I kind of sized down and used a different gauge than what's being called for in the pattern. So I think the way I did it, I kind of overcompensated by shortening the straps. So at first they were again, super, super tight. So I undid the graft, um, it's a bottom up garment. So I undid the graft so that I can add more length. I added like one pattern repeat to the front and the back strap, and then it was still too short, so I had to go in and do that again. Um, so now it's the right length, but there were so many ends to weave in for just like this little tiny piece of fabric on the strap. I was like running out of places to like weave in my ends via, you know, reverse duplicative stitch. And it just, it took so long uh, to do that. So um, yeah, I that was something that's completely on me, obviously, to like, you know, not follow the instructions and then be like, oops, I didn't knit enough and then continually to add it back. So that was kind of, um, that was kind of a pain that I inflicted on myself, I guess. Um, I do want to talk about swatching because I had some sizing difficulties with this pattern and I found the way that the swatch is described to be incredibly confusing to me. So hopefully um, that will help some of you if you are needing to swatch for this because the first time I knitted it, I made like maybe six inches off the body and realized it was way, way, way too big. Like at first I thought maybe, you know, eventually like it'll tighten up after you knit a little bit more, it'll, it'll, it'll look a lot more right, but it was just completely the wrong size. And I think that had to do with the way that my, I made my swatch. So um, 
oh, I should, before I complain about this watch, I just wanted to say I think it was a really lovely pattern besides that. It looks intricate, but it's actually really easy to memorize. Uh, at first I had to like learn the pattern, but after a couple of repeats, I didn't have to look at the chart at all in order to just keep knitting. I could just read the pattern and know what to do next. So um, it ended up being going a lot faster than maybe it looks based on how intricate it is. Back to swatch, uh, the swatch. So the swatch instructions say something like 20 stitches and 40 rows per 10 centimeters. And in the bar row stitch pattern, which is chart C, they also say one repeat of the stitch pattern rows one to eight of chart C measures four centimeters. So when I first read that, at first I thought the second sentence, the, you know, one repeat is four centimeters. I thought that referred to the row gauge because when it says like rows one through eight of a centimeter, you know, rows one through eight, you know, I assumed that they were talking about the row gauge. Looking back, it doesn't really make sense because, you know, if there's eight rows and that gives you four centimeters, those are some pretty big rows, you know, like it's, it's not the row gauge. They're talking about, um, the size of each of these, like each of these, these repeats horizontally stitch wise, but that wasn't clear to me. And I just referred to the first sentence, which is it's 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. And I was like, okay, when you make a stitch, when you make a swatch, you just want to have, you know, like whatever the 10 centimeter, the stitch count would give you the 10 centimeters plus some buffers. So you can accurately measure like the number of the stitch count in the middle of your swatch. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll make three pattern repeats because that's going to be 20 stitches plus like a good amount of buffer. So that'll be okay. So I did that and I have since unraveled my swatch. So I don't have that to show you. So I'll show you on this final fabric. But so I think I basically knitted like one, two, three, three columns of this. Um, figuring that I'll just measure somewhere in the middle um, for the 20 stitches. But the issue is, you know, each of the fans, like they flare out because there's like decreases in the pattern. So I really didn't know how to measure 20 stitches. Like was 20, you can't really kind of, basically you have to kind of measure just full pattern repeats versus like, you know, from the middle of this repeat to the middle of that repeat count 20 stitches because depending on which row you're on, there's a different number of stitches uh, because it's like a fan, you know? There's like a lot of stitches and then fewer stitches. Um, so, Basically, when I had knitted just the three full pattern repeats without a border, thinking that, you know, because there's more than 20 stitches that there will be a border, that's enough. Um, I, like, I didn't have an accurate way to measure the, the stitch count, except to measure just, like, one pattern repeat in my swatch. Um, because, you know, even though I knitted three, the edges of the last, the, the two edge columns were the edge stitches of the swatch. And as you know, like the edge stitches are kind of a wash because, you know, they're always going to be not like accurate. They're gonna be usually like bigger. So it's, that's why you have to have a border. And I didn't knit the border. Um, so what I did was I just measured like how much this one pattern repeat is, but obviously that introduces some error. And because it's only one, the propagation of error is like really large. Um, and I think that's what led to and an accurate gauge swatch. I think the correct way to make the swatch would have been to make, let's say three, um, three pattern repeats plus like a garter border. So you can accurately measure like more than just one of the pattern repeats. Just because like for such a, you know, closely fitting garment, I feel like the fit is really important because let's say that, you know, when you're measuring one pattern repeat and you're like half a millimeter off, you know, that's half a millimeter is, is quite small, but let's say that the whole, you know, the whole garment has just making up numbers, a dozen, a dozen of these pattern repeats. Then if you're off by 0.5 millimeters per pattern repeat, that ends up being like six centimeters overall of error, which is like a lot of error, you know? It's something that wouldn't really show up very significantly if you had like a very boxy, loose fitting garment. But, you know, for a pad for a garment that has very little ease, it really completely changes the fit. And so I think it is really important to make a big enough gauge swatch that you can get the fit accurately if that's something that you care about, which for me it was. So anyway, because I got this the gauge swatch wrong, I think I ended up knitting, my gauge was, was larger, but I think I didn't accurately measure how much larger it really was. So I, um, it ended up being just like having too many centimeters of positive ease that I knew it wouldn't look good. So I, had to 
like I had to stop knitting it. Um, but I guess what happened was like I had knitted maybe like this much at the bottom or something like that. So that's kind of like a gigantic gauge swatch that I could then use to figure out, you know, pretty accurately what size I needed to knit. So based on that, I wound up sizing down needle sizes even more um, and then also sizing down a garment size to, to knit it. And this resulted in the fit that I wanted, uh, which which was good. Um, and I will admit, like when I first knitted this much of the, bo of the body and realized I had to frog it all, I was like pretty, pretty devastated. Like, you know, the pattern is really fun to knit, but I, I still don't want to just undo all the work that I did. So that was kind of a bummer. And I just kind of had to like leave it aside for a couple of months. So I actually did that before I left for my Scotland trip. And then I just didn't, I didn't frog it before I left. I just kind of left it there, came back, looked at it for a little longer and then like really steeled myself to be like, okay, I think I'm ready to start again. And then I, I still didn't frog it actually. I hadn't, I used the second ball of the yarn to, to start the fabric, start the garment again. And then only then after I knitted like this garment, the correct size, um, and used up that first ball, I was like, okay, now I feel like I can unfrog the initial false start and it, it didn't sting as much at that time. So yeah, um, in the end, I'm really glad I knitted this. It's very comfortable. I think it'll be very, very uh, easy to wear. Um, so yeah, very happy with this pattern and I would recommend it. I would just be careful about gauge swatching. Okay, one more tank top and it is this Neuro Kakagori tank top that I'll insert a try-on clip for. So I had wanted to knit something out of this yarn specifically. I really like Neuro yarn. The yarn is kind of like thick and thin. There's like just a lot of texture and interesting colors in all the yarns and I I just was really excited by it. So I got one ball of the Neuro Kakagori which is like 200 grams so it's definitely enough to make a tank top and I just wanted to make something basic um, in terms of the silhouette to like really show off this yarn and given the gauge that I got which was I think like 18 maybe something like that 18 or 20 I can look that up um, and basically based on the gauge that I got I didn't find a pattern that I like particularly loved that I wanted to base it off of. Um, so I didn't get a new pattern. Instead, I followed the process of the drinks on the patio crop, which is an hour and weight, like super negative ease top, um, which is not the same gauge at all, but I just kind of used that as a guideline to knit a bottom up tank top like this. So I made some modifications though. Um, for example, because it's bottom up, I decided to do a provisional cast on. So I used the crochet provisional cast on method. And so the stitches without the, I didn't start with the ribbing. I started with just the stockinette and all of the bottom was on hold on waist yarn. That was, you know, part of my provisional cast on. And then I kind of put that on hold while I knitted the rest of the garment because I wanted some flexibility to adjust it after I've knitted the top and can try it on. I think I read that from the description of the June top pattern or something like that, um, where it said that, you know, you can do a provisional cast on to adjust the length. And so, yeah, I decided to do that. And then for the shaping for the top, I, I generally follow the proportions of the drinks on the patio crop, but like for a different size, um, basically I had to make a bunch of stitch adjustments because my stitch was, my gauge was off and I wanted a different amount of positive ease. And I think that I did an okay job. Um, in fact, I think I'm not completely happy with the fit of this tank top and I'd like to go back and fix it. I think it's an easy enough fix that it won't be a huge deal. Um, but again, just wanted to clarify, this isn't a reflection on that pattern because I didn't really follow it properly. I was kind of eyeballing it. Um, Cause one of the issues that I have with it is I wish that this strap wasn't so thick. Um, I think that I was really wanting to make it first of all, bra friendly. And also I kind of like the look of those really slouchy slipovers. Um, so I think I was kind of two minds. One is like, you know, a neutral positive, a neutral ease, just like tank top versus like a slouchy oversized slipover. And maybe I got a little bit caught in between because I feel like, like this isn't super tight, but it's definitely not slouchy and huge either. So this, this very thick, shoulder part um, I think I'm just not a big fan of. I think I'd like to go back and just do a couple more decreases before the shoulder in the front and the back so that it's it tapers in a little bit more. I think I, I just like that fit a little bit better. 
that's really the main change I want to make. Um, I think I also maybe made the eye cords a little bit too big, like maybe I picked up too many stitches. But I think the challenge here is that with this yarn, um, it's very thick and thin and there's sections that are super thin and th sections that are super thick. And so I think depending on which section of the yarn that you're using, the stitch gauge that you end up getting is very different. Like for example, if I look closely, the the stitch size of the eye cord is like a lot bigger than the stitch size of, you know, just the, the stockinette fabric right near it. Um, so yeah, I think when I wear it, you might be able to see that the edges kind of flare out just a little bit. And also the neckline, I think I just, in this yarn, don't love the way an I-cord neckline looks. I think a rib would look a lot more, like, needed, neater. Um, so I think that that's something I want to change as well. So I don't know if I'm going to do that in the immediate future, but maybe sometime soon if I feel, like, compelled to wear this top, I'll go back and kind of rip back the I-cord on the neck and then the armholes, probably rip back up to, like, here where it starts to where I stopped decreasing and just continue the decreases for maybe four or five stitches um, and then finish off there. And then again, uh, wrap up with, maybe change the neckline a little bit, maybe make it a little bit more of a scoop. So start decreasing for the neckline a little bit earlier um, and again, do a rib. So yeah, I don't think that would be too hard to change. This whole tank top took me like a week to knit because it's on relatively large gauge and you know, this part is just a stockinette tube. And the yarn actually feels really lovely to knit on my, um, metal needles. I read some people talk about how it's easy, easily breakable. And although that happens like occasionally, it didn't happen nearly enough for me to like bother me. So yeah, um, I, I think this isn't like a 10 out of 10 right now, but I think it's, it's salvageable. And the yarn, um, I haven't really worn it out because I, you know, I wanted to make some improvements to the fit, but the yarn feels pretty comfortable. Like it's definitely thicker than something like this, but it still feels extremely dry to the touch. And so because of that, I think it'll be pretty comfortable. Um, Color-wise, I think that's something that I I feel like is a little bit hard for me for Noro yarns as somebody who's like a little bit picky about color. When I look at the yarn, like a picture of the yarn online, I thought it would be like, you know, primarily orange, you know? And I thought also that this would be a more vibrant orange than I guess it is. Like here, it's a little bit more peachy, I'd say, peachy corally than like orange. And... Um, so yeah, I guess the orange itself is a little bit more muted than I initially thought. But also like when you look at it from afar, because, you know, even though I feel like the main color is orange, there's so many of these cooler toned, like bluish colors mixed in that when you look farther away, the overall color that it reads is a lot more like autumnal. And like, you know, I wouldn't say brown, but like leaning more to the on the brown side, you know, it just basically looks darker. So if you look at the fabric like more closely, like more like, you know, um, up close, it looks a lot more colorful than like the overall vibe that it gives if you're like really far away and just getting a general read of the overall color. And so what I'm trying to say is that from up close, I absolutely adore the color combination from far away. I feel like, again, it reads a little too close to my skin tone. So yeah, I think it'll be okay though. Like in the try on clip, you'll see I tried it on with like darker pants. And again, similar to that um, knitting for olive cardamom color, as long as there's more contrast in the rest of my outfit, I think it's it's okay. Um, but yeah, I I was a little bit more excited about this after I filmed the try on clip for this video. Um, I think this looks a lot cooler than I initially gave it credit for. And I'm actually really now excited to make that modification so that I can be excited to wear it. All right, so this next thing I showed in my last video and it actually was already like almost finished. So they're like, I didn't knit on it that much more after I filmed my last video. And that is my Levitate Wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I'll put in a try on clip because it's now gotten a lot hotter and I, I don't really know if I can wear it. So um, based on that, you can obviously tell this is not really a classic summer knit. It's used knit using uh, wool, which is definitely too hot to wear wool in this weather. But in my defense, I started it back in like June, um, when, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't quite this hot. And also I was just too excited by this pattern and this yarn to resist. And so, yeah, I've since finished it. I knitted this using Wool Addicts Air, which is a, um, I think, Let's see, 84% extra fine merino and 16% nylon. So there's like a nylon core and then the merino fibers are spun. So it's a blown yarn and it's extremely uh, fluffy and airy and light. 
and I absolutely adore this color. It reminds me of strawberry puree, which, um, because it's kind of like heathered, you know? So because of that, I feel like, you know, it does have a summery vibe, even though it's definitely not a summer appropriate fabric. Although I will say I actually have worn this twice, both to go to the movies, because, you know, even though it's hot outside, the movie theater is pretty chilly. The first time I saw the Spider-Man movie, the second Into the Spider-Verse movie, it was so good. And the second time I wore it to watch the Barbie movie, um, because it's pink. <laughs> so yeah, it, it kind of... Um, kind of worked out. I got to still wear it twice, even though it's so warm. I talked a little bit more about my experience knitting it in my last video, so you can go ahead and check that out if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, it is a drop shoulder cardigan with double, so much double knitting, the double knitted ties, the double knitted bottom band, and then the double knitted neck bands on both sides. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of double knitting, but the look is, it, like the look of it looks so professional and beautiful. Um, there's this shaping in the end that I feel like it's very classically my favorite things knitwear, like this shoulder detail in the back. And yeah, um, some thoughts on the final finished object in terms of the shape. I feel like this is really short. You can probably see in the try on clips, like this is a little bit more cropped than my um, Barbaro top, <laughs> that like lacy tank top that I was just showing. It's, it's very cropped. I did size down. I knitted a size extra small because I th there was like so much uh, positive ease that I just didn't want something too oversized. And I think the ease was pretty good, but the garments are also a little bit shorter the sh the for the smaller sizes and the larger sizes um, because it's a rect it's triangle, I guess. So, you know, as you make it longer, you also make it wider. So the ease, I think it's, it's just right, but I do think it's a little bit too short and I wish I would have knitted it longer. And I feel like on this fabric, on this pattern, it's not such an easy fix because of all the double knitting at the bottom. There's no way I'm undoing this much double knitting. So um, yeah, I think when I had first finished it, I did block it and try it on to check for length, but I think it's a little bit hard to tell because, you know, like when your lie stitches are on the needles, um, like the length looks a little bit different. Like I feel like maybe the heaviness of the cable for my interchangeables pulled it down a little bit. So it looked a little bit a little bit longer than it was. And I also was trying to estimate how much the double knitted bands length would make the different, make the garment look. And it's a little bit hard to estimate. So in the end, I, I do think it's a tad short. Um, I would have liked it to be a little bit longer, not too long, obviously, because for tr for like these triangles, I think it does look good when it's closer to your waist, your natural waist, as opposed to like way below it. Um, in my opinion, I think it looks a little bit nicer that way. So, you know, it is kind of a trade-off between like the look that you get and how long it is. I do have one pair of light wash jeans that are like extremely high-waisted, like way above my belly button. Um, so I think I can definitely wear this with those pants um, because it's so high-waisted. But for most of other like normal high-waisted pants, like this still kind of shows your belly, which it's just a little counterintuitive for such a thick garment, you know? Like I really don't like when my my warm sweaters rise up and the back, my back is cold. Um, so that is that is kind of my main like reservation about this pattern. Um, well, maybe it's not about the pattern. Maybe I should have just like lengthened it because I knitted a size down. So I probably can't blame the pattern, but yeah, I overall still really like it. I think it looks absolutely adorable and I really like this color, so. That's my, uh, that's my levitate wrap. On to the next. We're still on finished objects here. I guess this next one isn't, I still have a couple of ends to even, so if we're like really strict about it, it's not technically a finished object, but I'm like done with it, you know? So I'm gonna show it. Um, this is the camisole number four dress edition, as you can see. Um, it is obviously the camisole number four pattern by my favorite things knitwear. And then I did some waist decreases and then hip increases and lengthened it into a dress. I also have these tie straps, which actually I don't know if I like. Um, these, these are the only ends that I haven't woven in yet. But I don't know if I will because I'm not sure if I will keep the tie straps anyway, if I keep this dress at all. Um, but yeah, these are kind of the modifications I made. I also sized down needle size as usual, partly because I wanted to make sure this fabric isn't too see-through because obviously it's a knit dress. You don't really want it to be see-through. Um, and I, I think it's not. Um, it's like 
opaque enough for sure, in my opinion, to wear on its own without an underlayer. So I sized down to like 2.75 millimeter needles, whereas the pattern originally called for 3.5 or something like that. I also, yeah, sized down to extra small. I think I maybe already mentioned that um, in order to make it like more fitted. And then I also did waist shaping to make it more decreased. So I think that's kind of where I went wrong. I think my main issue with this dress is how much negative ease it has. It just, it's like a little bit too much. I feel like it, because of the fabric that it's so drapey as well, it just really highlights everything. And that's really, that's just not really my preference. Like there's nothing wrong with it. The fabric is really nice. Like the fabric is actually amazing. It's so drapey, it looks beautiful, but I just haven't worn it. Like I finished it, yeah, like at the end of June, basically pretty shortly after I finished my last video, after I published my last podcast episode. Um, and I had mentioned I wanted to finish it for my birthday so I can wear it for my birthday, but then like, I didn't really want to wear it on my birthday. I wasn't like excited to wear it. I just wore like store-bought clothes, <laughs> which is, you know, I feel like that really says something because normally I'm like really excited to wear something hand-knit, you know? But yeah, this is kind of a flop, I dare say. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. It's just that the fact that I haven't worn it, I think really said something. Um, so what am I going to do about it now? Um, I, I don't think I'm going to frog it just yet. Like it was a lot of work, you know, but you know, the summer is like slowly coming, is coming to an end and yeah, I don't think I'm going to wear it <laughs> before the summer ends. So I guess I'll just save it until next year and maybe we'll just come next season. I'll see what I want to do with it. Like maybe I'll want to make some modifications. Um, or maybe there's something else I want to use this yarn for really badly. I'll just frog it at that time, like at the time that I want to reclaim this yarn. I think if I wanted to keep this, some things I'm considering are like, maybe number one, I could just make it into a camisole, like, and wear that. Or I could kind of like cut the dress portion and then knit up a different top, like maybe something more like a tank top, like a square neck tank top closer to what the Barbaro tank is like. Um, but obviously in in broken rib to match the rest of the dress. Maybe I can do that, like to still have a dress, but with a different top. And then at that time, I can also maybe take out some of the waist decreases to make it more of a loose fit. But yeah, I don't know yet. I don't know if I really, like if, I don't know if I'm really excited to have a dress in this fabric anymore because I have other dresses, you know, I have other like easy to throw on summer dresses that are just store-bought sewn dresses and they look just fine. <laughs> so yeah, this was kind of one of the bucket list items that I really wanted to try and I've tried it. So, so it's all right. <laughs> okay, so the last kind of finished objects I have to show is, um, <laughs> I don't wanna call it a flop. I feel like I should have maybe um, sprinkled these flops in the middle of my finished object so that I can end with something like really good, you know? But I feel like we started on like a really high note and then now I'm like tapering off with the things that are a little bit more problematic. This is the Relaxagon shirt. Um, I'll put the designer's name in the description because I can't quite remember. And this is actually for my uh, partner. So this is crocheted obviously, and it's crocheted using Sheepjiz Katona. I think I'm definitely saying that wrong, but it's 100% mercerized cotton and it's fingering weight. Yeah, I basically wanted to knit this because, or crochet this because I saw Grace on YouTube. She crocheted something like this for her friend for Coachella in this, in a white and then this like bright cobalt blue color. And it looks so cool. And I thought it looked really fun to make. And so I thought I'd make it for my partner because I thought this is something that he might wear. But instead of the blue, I chose this like lavender color. And the way I try to figure out the sizing is that I kind of measured one of his shirts that fits well and try to match the ease and the sleeve length for that. Um, so obviously it looks a little bit like oversized and big on me, like it doesn't look great right on me. Um, but I, like this is basically done except for the buttons. I haven't sewn on the buttons yet because I don't have buttons. I have to go get some. I have these like tortoiseshell buttons, but it doesn't really go with this summery vibe. So a couple of thoughts on this pattern. Um, so it's crochet. I started out as a crocheter and I did a lot of kind of free-handed patterns because most of the things that are crocheted, that I crocheted are just like pretty simple shapes like triangles, rectangles, squares. There's not a whole lot of shaping going on typically. And that's the case here too. Like everything is a rectangle. There's, 
there's very little actually I don't think there's like any shaping whatsoever um, like in terms of like shoulder sloping or, or anything like that and it fits better than I thought it would probably because it's so like meshy and drapey that maybe it doesn't matter that much that there's no shaping I will say that I also kind of made a mistake in the pattern like I did like an extra chain stitch in between the granny stitches so there's a lot it's a lot more meshy and the holes are bigger whereas in the actual pattern I think there's the holes are not quite this big so that's gonna be another difference that I made I kind of don't love how big the holes are but I feel like if, if I don't really think about how it could be different like if you're just looking at this on its own it looks okay um yeah I think I, th I think still, if, if I were to ever make this again, which I don't know if I would, I, I wouldn't have done the extra extra chain. Um, I don't know. I think that was just me like misreading the pattern or, or something like that. Yeah, this was pretty quick to crochet. I mean, crocheting is faster than knitting because like for every stitch that you make, like the row is it's so much wider so that, you know, you knit, you crochet three rows and you have like this much fabric or something like that. Um, well, that was an exaggeration, but you can see like each each granny stripe is pretty hot, like the height is pretty tall. So it takes less rows to get to where you need to go. Yeah, so we'll see. I think for a while I was really considering frogging it, um, but my partner encouraged me to just like finish it and see how it goes. And so I did. And um, I don't know. I don't think I'll frog it. Actually, I think we'll just leave it be. There were a lot of ends to weave in because it's cotton yarn, so you can't splice it. And I... Like, I think I got maybe 50 gram balls or something like that. So there were just a lot of, a lot of um, different balls of yarn that I had to end up seaming together. But yeah, there's not really much else to say about this. Oh, I guess it's very heavy too. Like, it's cotton um, and it's crochet. So crochet fabric is usually thicker. So this feels like the weight of a cardigan, but it's a shirt. But I will say it doesn't feel that bad when I'm wearing it. Like, I'm not like oh, I'm so weighed down or anything. But when I'm just lifting it by itself, I'm like, oh, it's heavy. And if I fold it, you'll really see like how thick it is. Crochet garments are, are really much thicker um, than knitted garments. So here I'm folding it. You can see it's pretty thick um, compared to let's say like my dress. <laughs> this is a full dress, so many more layers, you know. Um, also fingering yarn too, so yeah. This was an interesting experience. Like it was pretty fun to make, um, but I, I do have some potential issues with it. I'm not like opposed to making another one. I probably use an even thinner yarn, maybe a softer yarn. So the Katona I've used before for like a Migurumi because it's moisturized, so it's kind of shiny and it's durable. And I thought that that's what I wanted. But thinking back, I'm like, I don't really know if you need your clothes to be made out of moisturized yarn. Like I probably could get away with just, you know, non-moisturized yarn that's a little bit softer. Um, I also feel like this fingering weight yarn is a little bit thicker than some other fingering weight yarn that I have. Like this feels like a heavy fingering. So there's that as well. But just wanted to share fun little crochet object, a little bit different than normal. All right, so that's, that's all the things that I finished for the summer. Yeah, I have never really knitted like summer garments before and I think it's been really fun. It's nice to still have something hand knit to wear in the summertime. I think originally I was thinking maybe in the summer I'll just like knit sweaters so I'm ready for the fall, but when it's really hot outside, I really don't have that much of a desire to knit with like heavy wool. So it's kind of like when you think of what I want to be knitting on, um, I want to be knitting on these like more summery fabrics because it just feels a little bit more fun. So yeah, that's my experience with knitting this summer. I think I've already talked a long time, so I'll just do rapid fire whips. And next episode, I'll show more of like things I'm working on that's more fall vibes. So the first thing that I am knitting is actually uh, me re-knitting my first sweater that I made, my first like wearable sweater that I've ever made, which is the sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I had knit that using a strand of Illamani Sabri 2, uh, which is a cotton chainette yarn with alpaca fibers, and then uh, one strand of Camarosa, Camarosa Midnight Soul, which is a um, mohair alternative. It's like a tensile core with fluffy baby alpaca. But unfortunately, the Midnight Soul a lot of people love that yarn, but for me, it was just a little too prickly. And also because it was my first sweater, like the tension wasn't too great. There's no short rows in the pattern and the fit wasn't the best because of that. Um, also the sleeves were too short. So basically there were plenty of things I could fix with that sweater. Um, I just wanted to take out a strand and change the shaping. So I decided to re-knit it um, with just the Illamani Sabri. And here's what I've got so far. I made quite a bit of progress. Um, I did short rows. 
uh, both behind the neck and right underneath the sleeve split so that I can raise the back a little bit more. This isn't included in the original pattern, by the way. I think she came out with sweater number, sweater number nine light that has short rows, um, but I already had the original pattern, so I didn't want to get the new pattern. Um, also, my gauge now is like closer to 20 stitch gauge, which is actually the gauge of the sweater number nine light. So I guess what I'm really doing is like making the sweater number nine light using the sweater number nine pattern, sort of. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really excited to knit it. I'm going on some trips coming up this fall and I really, really, really want to pack this because it's such a nice transitional sweater. I love the shape. I love this like yoke detail. Um, it was one of my favorite like sweaters in terms of how it looked before I had frogged it and reclaimed the yarn. Um, but it wasn't the most practical to wear because it was irritating my skin. So I'm really, really excited to have this new version and I'll show you more about that and talk more about like the short rows if y'all are interested. Um, maybe my next episode. The second whip is a pair of socks. So these are going to be the Snowbell socks from the Santa's Garn Mictoldaman booklet. Uh, I have it right here. It's this booklet that I think everybody's seen. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just the socks. I have this white uh, Cascade Heritage, right? Yeah, Cascade Heritage sock yarn. Um, and I just have gotten started. I'm knitting it two at a time, which is exciting. I didn't intend to make it two at a time at first, so I just cast it on one sock and I knitted a little bit. And then eventually I realized like, oh, you have to count number of plain stockinette rows between the lace repeats. And I felt like it would just be easier to do that once. So I figured I'd try knitting it two at a time. Um, so I, you know, because I didn't start two at a time, I just cast it on a second sock, knitted up to the same amount that I had knit on the first sock and then arranged it in the way that two at a time socks are arranged. So now I'm knitting it two at a time. <laughs> I'm going on a trip, like I said, coming up. So I think I'll take this on the plane because socks are just pretty compact and easy to bring. So I think I'll bring that. Last rapid fire whip is the Amy Slipover by Santa Scarn, also from this booklet. I will show you the slipover. This is what it looks like. The Amy Slipover, and I just am still knitting the back panel. So not too much to look at. Oh, I'm not using the suggested yarn. I The suggested yarn is like one strand of their San, Santa's Garn 10 Silk Mohair and the one strand of the Sunday. Yeah, the fingering weight one. Um, but I, because of the like, you know, big turtleneck part, I didn't want turtleneck that, uh, mohair that close to my neck. So I wanted to just use one strand of a wool. And this is Cascade Merino DK in the color dark chocolate. And also my gauge is way bigger. Um, I think like everything I've knit this uh, episode has been like off gauge. So I just kind of like use a ratio to adjust the stitches. So for example, my stitch gauge results in like, I need like 82% of stitches that the pattern calls for to make like 10 centimeters. So I just multiplied all the stitch counts by like 0.82 um, to figure out and round it a little bit to figure out how much I should knit everything. So I drew out the schematic um, in my little notebook. Um, and then I'm just kind of referring to those stitch counts as well as the pattern to, to knit it. It hasn't been too complicated at all because I think the shape is pretty straightforward. You know, it's like two panels, then you have the neck and then the, the ties at the end. Um, so yeah, this is the, the back. I have knitted a, the armhole increases already. I think this fabric looks a bit stiff, but I did have a swatch that I blocked and after I block it, it's like very soft and um, like not stiff, I guess. So it, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. I think the, the yarn says that it should be a 22 stitch gauge, but this is already like uh, a 19, 18 to 19 stitch gauge. And it's already like pretty thick. So I can't imagine how much like denser it would be if this was at a 22 stitch gauge. So I'm, pretty happy with uh, this amount of gauge. I think it'll be still like dense and warm, but also like maintain its shape, you know? So yeah. All right. So that's, that's it for my rapid fire whips. I will talk more about that in another episode when I, when I finish more of it. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. It's really nice to be back on here again and sharing everything that I've been working on. Also, I think preparing for the video and like pulling in all my knits and filming the try on clips kind of 
helps me look at the knits in a different way. Like I was kind of down about my Kakagori top, but now that I look at it again, I'm like, actually, it doesn't, it doesn't look that bad. Like I just, just need a couple of fixes and then it'll be good. And then there's also some other pieces that I'm really excited about, like this one and that lacy Barbro top that I'm really excited to get to share with you as well. So yeah, um, thank you for watching. If you like this video, I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you next time, hopefully very soon. Bye everyone.